focusing on. All right, great. So yeah, last time I wanted to give people an introduction to uh, art. I mean, that was all mostly talking, talking, maybe here's something a little bit more practical. So the thing is that some people are asking, how do they start with pencil? Like, how do, how do I pencil? How do I start? Um, to be honest, I actually don't use pencil. I use pen. And I'll give you a bunch of reasons why. And I actually use a, a special pen setup. So I'm going to show you guys um, before we even start drawing, I'll show you the materials. And I have done videos on this, but it, why not? Here's, here's a, a faster run through of it. So three things that I'm using. This is a friction pen. It's, a, it's, it's basically spelled F-R-I-X-I-O-N. It's made by Pilot. It's a ballpoint pen, a clicky thing. And a, like these are, this is what your work could wind up looking like if you use one of these pens. Now, I know a lot of people are worried about, you know, oh, but you know, if I'm using pens, well, how am I going to be able to erase um, if I'm using pens? Because pens, you know, are explicitly like permanent and all that. Well, it, this is an erasable pen and it's pretty cheap. I mean, it's just a couple bucks to buy one. Uh, I bought these in, in Japan, but I mean, you may find them at your local print store or on Amazon or whatever for like a few bucks. And they are erasable. So the reason why they're called friction pens or F-R-I-X-I-O-N friction pens is that it uses the heat generated by friction. There's a, like an eraser here. And if you strike the eraser like a match, it generates enough heat. It warms up the page enough to erase the ink like that. So it's an erasable pen. And I find that the pen is nicer than paper. It's it's. I like it more than pencils because pencils will smudge. Pencils smudge. They don't. They you have to constantly sharpen the damn things, and um, you know they leave graphite mess. And if you throw the thing in your in your bag, if you throw your sketchbook in your bag, if you flex the page, the graphite comes out of the page and it just makes this dust. And then everything over time, everything in your bag will just be coated like coated but with pencil dust, and it's just really gross. And um, that's why I don't like it. So that's why I like pens. That pens now they can erase like just as good as pencils if not better and um and then i've got these other tool implements here which i also use for erasing so okay so in, in terms of the erasing here i'll show you the couple of ways in which i can erase so i've drawn a fairly large doodle um on the page here so a big spiral and this is you're gonna see you're gonna watch me erasing this thing bing 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 so what this is this is a torch lighter and you'll notice that i'm using very very brief hits of heat i'm just Click, 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 and you can just see. There, there it is. Boom, 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 boom. So it's like a hair dryer, right? You can, you can basically just puff like this at my hand. It feels uncomfortably hot, but it is enough to erase uh, the paper. Obviously, something like this, don't use it in a shopping mall because um, their fire detectors will see the open flame and they'll go off and bad, bad, don't do it. So yeah, something like this, um, definitely something that you use in your own home. And just be fast about it. You know, you don't don't leave it on. Like don't don't do this. Like don't don't click it on and leave it on. And is butane refillable? Something like this. Maybe run you maybe ten fifteen dollars. You know, shoot. Like there are electric um, erasers, like like pencil erasers, which cost more. So something like this is pretty cheap off the shelf. Get it from a cigar store. Uh, fill it up with um, you know just butane gas. Again, lighter lighter gas is really easy to deal with something like this. And you can adjust the flame. And uh, yeah, it's it's great large scale erasing so this thing amazing uh obviously you can't use it on a plane but i have a solution for that as well so let's say if you want to do fine point erasing so i'll show you like i got four lines here which are all very close together right now and let's say i need to erase uh just one of these lines so this is a max wax um wax working pen so it, it's powered with a single double a and there's and there's a heating element on it so i just warm up the heating element and i just run it over a line that, that needs to go away and you don't have don't apply any pressure it just needs heat and then you can literally you can just destroy the lines that you don't need now just be careful that you don't put this whole sketchbook in like a really hot place because it's 60 degrees if you throw it in like a hot car your drawings may vanish also if you throw this thing in the freezer um then your drawing your erase lines will come back so just keep, be, be very careful about about like temperature extremes and if you want to commit something you know, and make it permanent, then just use a permanent pen in conjunction with um, the friction pen and then just blast it with your lighter to uh, to clear it away. Um, I highly recommend using torch lighters. Uh, in my case, I'm using a, a Zico brand torch lighter. And I'm just using it because I like the pistol grip. I like the pistol grip that it's got. I like the fact that it really directs the heat, like get, it acts like a little mini hair dryer. And, you know, I'm pretty far away from the page. I'm like maybe about like an inch away whenever I do this, um, this, this erasing stuff. And I just, you know, blink, I just blink the thing, just click, 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 click. 
and uh, use that to erase it. So those are pretty, oh, right, and of course the paper that you should be using. Um, there's just a few, there's just a few requirements for the paper. Uh, one of these is the paper thickness. You do want something that's kind of, you know, reasonably thick paper. They would call this paper like 98 pound or 160 gram paper. So when you're looking at your sketchbooks, something 98 gram, 98 pound paper, something around there, you know, you, it should have some, some thickness to this. And the reason why is because, um, if you have other drawings underneath, like if I have, um, here, a, a little thing here and a little thing here. Okay. So I've got like these two doodles. And then if I start erasing, well, I don't, I don't actually know. I should really give this a test. So if I blast it like that, right, you want your other drawing to survive underneath. So that's why you want a relatively thick piece of paper. Now, mind you, if you only draw on one side of the page, if you try to draw on the other side, I have a pretty bad, uh, pretty bad feeling about this, but I think that if I drew like something uh, here, okay, so that's where it is. Okay, so if I erase this point right here. Yeah, it will destroy the drawing on the other side. So just, you know, draw on a single side, use reasonably thick paper so that your, your lighter blast won't go all the way through. And, um, you know, that's, that's why you need that, that thickness. Um, the other thing is, is the size of the sketchbook. This is a 7x10. 7 inch by 10 inch or 17.8 by 25.4 centimeter. Uh, you know, something like this. This is, a, this is actually like my favorite size. It's a really, really good size. There's one that's slightly smaller. This is 75 pound paper. This will probably still work. Um, this is 5.5 by 8.5. So nice small sketchbooks. Okay, you don't need giant ones because you want something that you can just throw in a book bag. And spiral bound. Spiral bound is very important so that the thing opens up very easily. Oh, that's my cell phone. I'm actually checking comments on, on the last video I did. So yeah, I do actually make an effort to answer people's comments and read them. Um, yeah, so I mean, that, that's why I would say, um, you know, use, use sketchbooks that are of a reasonable size like that. And then another thing I want to say about sketchbooks is that you want something, you want a couple of things. Number one, you want paper that is very, very fine grain. Fine grain and no lines. No lines, no grid lines, no nothing. There's a reason for this. It's because you're trying to draw uh, three-dimensional optical illusions, and if you're trying to do it on line paper, okay, the line paper you're, is always going to tell your eyeballs that you're looking at flat paper, right? Like, because you can see the damn lines on the page. Uh, if there's shadows that are cast on the page, this also tends to ruin the optical illusion as well. So a lot of times what I do is I have a lighting setup. Now, the camera kind of doesn't reach over properly, but I actually have like a big... Um, bar light that's up there sorry so you can see this giant bar light and usually what happens is i have this bar light i, I would usually swivel over to the right and have my bar light uh set up so that the bar light would light from both sides it essentially eliminates shadows um when this thing's in the right place so the thing is that you want to have as much lighting coming in from your sides and from the back and whatever to erase and eliminate the hand shadows that you can right because you're really trying to um to get something where you you don't see you're trying to eliminate all the depth cues on the page that you you know that you can except for the ones that you draw so you know line paper is just putting a bunch of you know it's like a bunch of prison bars on your page right so get get the freaking pr pr prison bars off right i'm not i'm not telling people to go out and get you know really expensive art books like these things are like maybe eight dollars five to eight dollars i know it's not that cheap but I'm saying make the investment, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not telling you this just to make you spend lots and lots of money. Um, it's because, it's for a very good reason, is that you don't want the paper grain, you don't want your shadows, you know, you want to avoid having shadows, you want to avoid any kind of lines or crap that's going to break your sense of illusion and depth. Um, as for the wax working pen, this is, I, I didn't mention what that was, this is a Max Wax, wax working pen, takes a double A, and like one heating element will last a really, 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 really long time. As long as you're not pushing hard on the page, you're just like just touching, then it'll do just fine. Okay, so let's talk about actual skills. So in this case, um, when you're doing your exercises, one of those things would be drawing large circles, right? People say, I can't draw a circle, then you can do this, right? You can draw. Um, one of the things that, that I see a lot of people have problems with is they're always drawing with this. Never draw with your fingertips. Okay, like unless you're doing really, really small things, generally you don't want to draw with your fingertips. In my case, if I wanted to draw small things, I can actually look at this. This is not using my fingertips. This is moving around on the palm, right? I'm using the, I'm, I'm basically moving around like that if I need to do small features. So generally speaking, I don't do a whole lot of fingertip drawing. And there's a reason for that is because this ballpoint pen, if you hold it too far to the side, you hold it sloppy, 
it's not going to draw. It's not going to draw properly. And if you're using any kind of um, uh, like like a chalk or using uh, anything with like a, a chisel tip on it, like a marker, then usually you have to use your fingering to your fingertips to angle to handle the angling of the pen or, or the, the marker. And then after that, you have to use the rest of your arm to move it around. Now, granted, this is not a, a comfortable feeling. This is not a, a feeling that comes naturally to a lot of people. So this is why you have to practice it. You have to practice it to turn the uncomfortable feeling into something that's comfortable. So large circle, large circle practice, you know, draw large ellipses. And then the other important thing is targeting. So targeting means that you are able to, let's say, draw ellipses where they touch. You know, I'm touching lines like this, right? Or, or maybe there's an intersection here and I'll draw circles which have to go through that point and try both clockwise and, and counterclockwise. The whole purpose of this is to just give yourself the right kind of feeling for it. Oh, by the way, as, 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 a, as a corollary or ancillary, um, when you're drawing using your arm, this is in a way what the same kind of skill that you use when you're doing any kind of FPS shooting. So if you're doing any you know, first person shooting um, and you're using like a pro gamer mouse and, and those nice gaming pads and all that stuff, you generally don't want to draw using just wrist movements because your, your aim will just really, really suck. If you're drawing using your entire arm, it's the same kind of movement. So in a way, playing a lot of FPS games, take those FPS games, gaming skills you've got and apply them to drawing and vice versa. If you're getting really good at drawing using your arm, take those skills and bring them over to, to like FPS gaming. So yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that use your whole arm and, and use that to draw your circles and start filling up pages, right? Like I can start filling up this page with large circles. This is just something that you can gradually, you know, become comfortable with. And the other thing is this orbiting, right? So I do a lot of orbiting, meaning I'm, I'm making a lot of pra practice strokes, right? So it's like kind of, it's like aiming a dart, right? When you aim a dart, you, you're trying to think about where do you want that dart to hit? And you, you take a practice stroke and then you throw it. You, you practice until it feels about right and then you throw. So it's the same thing here in that I'm doing a lot of this practice orbiting. And, and then I apply pressure when I feel like the line is where I need it to. Now, granted, this ink does smudge a little bit. Um, if it's, if it's, if, it, if you leave like a, maybe a little blob like that, that will probably smudge, but don't forget. I mean, you can always just work on it with a permanent pen and then you can blast it away or just give it time and let it dry off. But generally speaking, I don't actually mind the smudging all that much because the smudges are confined to this little area. They don't just like migrate forever and, and wind up in your bag. So yeah, I mean, you'll smudge. Don't worry. Just deal with it. Just live with it. Um, and if you really, if it's really bothering you, then, then just, you know, blast it and then redraw it. Um, okay, so anyway, yeah, that, that handles pretty much all the, um, the circular shapes. Uh, next thing, I guess, maybe you could take this, any of these large circles, put a dot in the center, and then just practice doing straight lines. So it's pretty much the same exercise, except now you're using this to draw straight lines, and you're going to go all the way around the circle. And you're going to try and touch, you're trying to touch the edge and, cu and come back to the same center point. Okay, so something like that would be another way to just get used to the feeling of, of you know, drawing and stuff. So once again, I'm just going to pull this thing out and... Yeah, I actually prefer doing blasts. It also consumes a lot less gas when, when I do it this way. So yeah, I mean, I can, I can pretty much just, like, erase everything on this page using this. It'll take a while. So I mean, if you if if you have the butane to spare, but you don't have the paper, well then you can you can spend all the time blasting the the drawing. Oh yeah. So if you do it from a distance, actually, you can. If you do it from a distance, you get a wider area. You get a wider area of effect. Okay. So yeah, try getting that with a pencil. It's not happening. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. But this thing lets you do it, okay? This thing erases, like, almost as nicely as digital. Almost as nicely as digital. The only thing you don't have is a flood fill. And you don't have, like, the backspace key to, like, just blow away an area. But it works pretty darn well. So, yeah, um, right, next, next thing to do would be, um, well, being able to deal with perspective and perspective shifts. So... You have to deal with a thing I call planarity or planar, you know, so if something's on a plane, right? The, the idea is that this, if this is a, a planar surface and the plane can rotate and you can see it at different angles and that kind of thing. So you, be able, you have to be able to handle plane shifts. So we just look at this little circle here, right? This circular dot. 
when we were earlier when I was drawing ellipses, you're going to have to deal with planar shifts of ellipses. This is probably easier than dealing with rectangles and dealing with cubes. So I say, fine, we'll start you off dealing with planar shifts. And one of these things we can do is we can just take a circle. And then here's one thing you can do is you can perform a planar shift. So I'm going to just choose in one axis going out this way. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the circle and I'm turning it. And if you want, you can just do individual. So when you're at the edge, the ellipse is going to be flat like that. Think of this as just putting a bunch of coins. Right? You're just putting coins on this, this spherical surface. Okay. You also have to deal with the fact that the ellipse has a major and minor axis. Right? So there's a major axis there. There's a minor axis. So the, the minor axis is always going to be perpendicular. Or I should say the major axis is always going to be perpendicular while the um, the minor axis is going to be... Oh, hang on. I might actually still be logged into uh, TeamSpeak. Yes, I am. Disconnected. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, you're, this, is, this is the thing, right? Is that you are going to... If I want, I can place a dot on the sphere, draw a line, and then treat that as if I'm placing a large thumbtack. So this might actually be better, is that if you arbitrarily choose multiple points on this thing... And then create, right? So in a way, it's like you're taking a rod, and the rod protrudes from the center, hits the surface point. Okay, so do that, and just get used to this feeling of the circle travel, like the circle is traveling over the surface of the sphere. Okay, so something like that. This is a, another really, really good exercise. And then something like this could easily be, um, here, let's do another one. This one is going to be, this is the simple on axial donut. All right, so you could make a donut like that. And then, I'm wondering if this pen is running out. It might be, because I, I, I use these things like crazy. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, so anyway, yeah, this would be, the donut exercise and this one is one that people have a lot of difficulty with because it's it's like compound exercise so I'll, I'll i'll break it down into the small into like smaller exercises for you so one of these would be um this i draw an i-beam like this and what i do is i perform a horizontal slide over like that now there's a bunch of ways to do this wrong one of these is to just slide across that's totally wrong the other way to do it wrong is to shrink and then make larger. That's also wrong. You have to be able to squish the thing. You have to be able to take this, this circle and then squish, and then you need to be able to reverse the angle. So this is a multi-stage breakdown. Um, like this, I, I have to show you a multi-stage breakdown of this transition. So a lot of drawing is dealing with transitions. So here's the transition, is that you're going from circle Okay, you're going from circle to something where the circle is squished. And if anything, it looks like the lowercase letter L, or it looks like a W, like that. Or it looks like an N, or, or like a letter, like a zigzag N or an M. Then this is a cursive letter M. Then you go into bottom loop, things like that. And then you go circle, circle, circle. So the thing is that what you do is that you can, you can take a circle like this, and on the spot you can... It. Now I'm going straight up and down. Now I change direction. Now I'm going the other way. So you can do it, it kind of starts to look like a sphere as well on the spot. So it's the same thing is that you're basically taking this circle and you're just also moving across while you perform this action. And you have to be able to switch from circle to the lowercase l to something that looks like a w, then to a letter n, then to the m. And then back to a circle. You, you might run out of space. If you're running out of space, it means you're moving across too fast. That's all it is. So, yeah. So something like that. Um, and then when you're dealing with doing the ellipse, in this case, what you have to do is you have to look at perpendiculars. So perpendicular, meaning if I draw a square, right? So 90 degree angle, this is going to be a descriptor for the major axis. So in this case, when I draw the ellipse and I go across, now I'm going up and down. You'll see that the ellipse has to tilt. Now I'm going back like that. Now it zigzags. 
Now there's the tilt again. Back to the letter M and then back to zigzags. So that gets you the, um, the ellipse. It's just all about handling transitions. And then something like this. Again, we can take this coin exercise and just start. If I'm across the top of this thing, then if I'm over on this edge, I had to reverse because I'm on the other side. Right, so you get the idea that I'm able to, to really travel on the outside of this, this object. All right, now um, here I'll show you another version of this exercise. Actually, this is a, a different type of exercise. So in this case, I'm going to draw something that looks like a roll of duct tape. Or toilet, toilet paper. Okay. And normally you wouldn't draw this framework, but I'm just showing you what has, what you... What has to be in your head is that you need this kind of duct tape framework. Okay, so now the purpose of this exercise is to get you to think about where the lines go as well as work in three dimensional space. Now, mind you, it's like you know, this this is like after you know two, three weeks of doing all the other previous stuff, like it takes time and it takes many, many pages to get good at this stuff. All right, so I mean, all these exercises they really you have to take your time with them get them to the level where you're consciously competent and then you have to get them to the point where you're unconsciously competent so it means that in in this case right like you still have to be drawing using your whole arm okay you, if you lapse into just drawing with your fingertips like go back go back go back to step one and start over okay so the thing is, is that yeah it's like all of this stuff has to be done you know using arm drawing okay so the exercise is this i have to alternate between going around Okay, then I also have a cross section where I can go up, I can go in, which means I'm going towards the inner circle, I can go down, and I can also go out, right? So this is going, whenever you're on the bottom, you have to go out, whenever I'm on the top, I have to go in, like that. If I'm inside, I always have to go down, if I'm on the outside, I have to go up, like that. So there's a cross section to this. And then, and the thing is that after each one of these transitions, I have to make one increment going around. So here we go. So I'm going to go around, now I'm going to go out. Now I'm going to go around, then I'm going to go up, then I'm going to go around, then I'm going to go in, I'm going to go around, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go around, I'm going to go out, around, up, around, in, around, down, around, out, around, up, around, in, around, down. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like when you don't have the framework. Starting from the inside. Around, out. Around, up. Around, in. Around, out. Around, down. Around, in. So that's what happens. And the thing is, if I want, I can go further. I can go around, out, around, up, around, in, around, out, around, down, around, oh boy, am I outside? Oh yeah, I'm on the outside, so I gotta go up, around, in, around, down, around, out. So you're starting to see something that looks kind of like that 3D pen thing, right? Where it looks like I'm extruding an object and it kind of sits into outer in, in outer space. So the thing is that you're having to do two things. Number one, you're having to make lines that sit in three dimensional space. Number two, you got to think about a sequence. And this is one of the, the things that a lot of times when people draw, when people draw, they have this little problem where they're always trying to draw things that look loose and sketchy. And they're always like, oh, I got to keep the pen going. And, and they, they tend to move their pen without really thinking about where that pen should be going. They tend to scribble, 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 scribble. And they're very, they're very undisciplined. So this exercise is to get you to stop and think before you ink. That's why this exercise exists. You have to know where that pen's going. You have to know what is that three-dimensional shape that you're trying to describe. So, you know, something like this can be applied to... Like I'm doing the, the, 3D, the 3D printing thing again. So right now...
right now I'm on the top plane. Right, so something like that. You can create three-dimensional forms very rapidly this way. And it's like if I'm trying to create a hand. I'm going to just create a, a box and then maybe make the wrist here. And I'm kind of arbitrarily going about this. Takes a bit of concentration. All right, so now you can actually see the thumb coming out here. Put the finger, put the thumbnail in there. You can work out maybe a knuckle, some knuckles. So I'll put in. Actually, if I just go faster here, sometimes I find that I actually have to move a lot faster. If I if I'm going too slow, then I I start to lose sight of the big picture. Close hand. Maybe we do one that's open. Get that webbing. I mean, already you can kind of see that, that curl over. And you can, you don't have to draw every single finger. You can kind of run over to the extremes of the hand. All right. Boom. I've got. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's, there's, this is how, this is the way, you know, the way that I draw is it's just like drawing using one of those 3D printing pens, you're just extruding tape, like plastic and you're wrapping it around forms. All right, that's it.